for everyone. So in my videos, we are going to see a series of lecture in the electrical properties of materials. So in this topic, first we are going to learn about formation of energy bands in solids. That means how the energy bands will be formed in the solids. After that one, we are going to learn based upon that one how the solids are classified into conductors, semiconductors and insulators. And we are going to learn different electrical properties in those materials. First, we will see how the energy bands are formed in solids. As uh, Let us consider an isolated atom. If you can take an isolated atom, in this isolated atom, for example, sodium you can take, its atomic number is 11, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 and 3s1. So this is the electronic configuration. That means in each orbit, it is filled with the electrons. This is the 1s orbit, 2s and it is 2p is having subshells. Okay. So three subshells, 2px, 2py, 2pz. Now here just for understanding we are representing like this. And this will be the outermost orbit, 3s. Okay, so here uh, we are having only one electron. And we know that as per the Bohr's atomic theory, as the radius of the orbit increases, the energy of the electrons increases. And every time we can't draw these orbits to represent the different mechanisms. For that purpose, we have considered a energy level diagram which represents the energy of the electron in particular orbits. So, as per the Bohr's atomic theory, lower uh, atomic orbitals is having lower energy. So, 1s orbital is having lowest energy. In this one, two electrons can occupy. Next level is 2s and next level is 2p. Okay, 2p is having three subshells. You can draw like this or 2px, 2py, 2pz and 3s is having one electron. So, this is the energy level diagram. The representation of energy of the orbits. A simple way of representation of energy of the orbits is known as energy level diagram. So here if we can see if we can move from lower orbit to higher orbit the energy of the electrons increases. So in the single atom we are having the discrete energy levels. But uh, we can't consider the same case when the sodium is considered in a solid. So when you take the sodium crystal in the sodium crystal instead of these discrete energy levels what happens is these orbits are affected by the nearest neighbor atoms. For example, this is the one sodium atom which is having different energy levels 1s, 2s, 2p and 3s. In the same way, it is surrounded with the other sodium atoms like this. So different orbits are there. Okay, so when the sodium atom is surrounded with different other sodium atoms, what happens is the overlapping of orbitals will happen. As per the bonding, when two atoms are far from each other, the attraction force acts in between the nucleus and negative charge electron. So, when these two atoms are far from each other, the nucleus of sodium atom attracts this electron core and the nucleus of this sodium atom attracts this electron core. So, like this, these atoms come closer with each other and initially there will be lot of attraction. So, when there is attraction, what happens? We have to assume that the overlapping of orbitals will takes place. Initially 3s orbitals overlaps, next 2p orbitals overlap, next 2s orbitals overlap, next 1s orbital overlaps if the attraction continues. 
But once these two atoms overlap with each other up to 1s and nucleus, what happens? The atoms will destroy. It doesn't happen up to uh, lowest orbitals. It will continue only up to some particular region because when these sodium atoms come close to each other, initial stages, the outermost orbitals will overlap and then next level of orbitals will overlap and uh, at some particular stage uh, instead of the attraction um, the repulsion came into picture the positive ion core repels this positive ion core and the electron core repels this uh, electron core so at this particular stage the atoms will fix in their uh, positions and um, the strong bonding will be formed that means overlapping of orbitals also happen up to some distance only that distance is nothing but interatomic distance and uh, or interatomic uh, separation so based upon this uh, factor um, we are going to explain the formation of uh, bands so let we can take on x axis interatomic separation and on the y axis uh, energy of the orbits so when these sodium atoms let us assume that far from uh, each other initially first 3s orbitals overlaps at one particular distance 3s orbitals overlaps so let us assume that these sodium atoms surrounded by 10 other sodium atoms we will get 10 3s energy levels they can be formed like this one group this is called one band and this band is nothing but having a range of energies of electrons because these energy levels doesn't overlap all 3s energy levels doesn't overlap instead of that one what happens they can form one bond band and in each band the electrons will stay they are very close to each other so next if they can come close to each other next to overlapping will be occur for 2p level so as the distance still decreases 2p level starts to overlap and it, if it continues next 2s level will energy levels overlap if still continues 1s energy level overlaps okay but in practical it doesn't happens up to very small distance okay so these atoms fix their positions at some particular distance that is called equilibrium interatomic separation so here let us assume that the equilibrium interatomic separation will be here okay so then the overlapping of orbital is confined up to 2s level only the overlapping of orbitals confined up to 2s levels only hence what happens all the 3s levels form one band and this is one energy band so continues here you can see this line cuts this band at these positions we can draw the bands so this is the 3s band formed next 2p band formed and here next one is 1s band formed and here see at lower and so only discrete energy levels will be there that means you know the overlapping doesn't continue up to lower orbitals it will uh, exist only up to some outermost orbitals and the outermost band which is formed due to the overlapping of outermost orbitals is known as valency band okay and other bands are lower energetic bands the gap between two bands is can be considered as a forbidden energy gap and you can assume that the last outermost orbital for sodium atom is 3s which is having only one electron they are known as valency electrons the electrons in the outermost orbital are known as valency electrons and this orbit is known as valency orbit and the band which is formed due to the overlapping of valency orbits is known as a valency band and always this valency band is partially filled or completely filled with the 
electrons. Okay, and just above the sodium 3s level, one more level is also the 3p level, but it is completely empty. It is completely empty. And in addition to these 3s levels, here 3p orbitals overlapping also happens. And the band which is formed just above the valency band due to the overlapping of 3p orbitals is known as a conduction band. And it is always empty. That means when the atom is isolated, if you can consider a single atom, you will get only discrete energy levels. But when the same atom is considered in the solid, you are having the bands. Okay, so finally to explain the to explain the different materials, we are taking two reference bands. One is a conduction band and another one is a valency band. And this valency band is always partially filled or completely filled with the electrons. Partially filled with or completely filled with the electrons. And this conduction band is always empty. And there is a band gap in between the conduction band and the valency band that is called forbidden energy band gap. That means there no energy levels exist for the electrons to stay. Forbidden energy band gap. So based upon these three forbidden energy band gap and the space between the conduction band and valency band, the solids are classified into three types. Okay, I will explain that one in our next lecture. Hope you have enjoyed this session.